This is a video for AQA Further Pure Mathematics. This matrices section 1.5 where we're looking at determinants and inverses of 2x2 two two matrices. If a matrix is A, then its inverse is written A minus 1, A inverse. The same sort of uh, symbol as you use for something like sine x and sine inverse, sine the minus 1 of x. And we know that, in general, the inverses of an operation undo that operation. So, for example, x squared and root x are inverse operations. Now, for matrices, what this means is that a and then a inverse applied to some number of so, uh, some, some vector so uh, for example if I've got a multiplied by 1 2 and then I also multiply by a inverse then because it gets us back to where we started it and uh, the a inverse undoes the operation of a then I can write that equation a inverse multiplied by a times 1 2 is equal to 1 2 now this means that a inverse times a must be exactly the same as the identity because we know that the identity matrix does exactly the same so we can say that a inverse a must be equal to the identity matrix which is 1 0 0 1 for 2 by 2 matrices Well, we can do exactly the same thing in the other order, and so that we also get that a a inverse is equal to the identity. Or indeed, writing them out together, we get the following. There's an important result that you need to take note of in your textbook or in the integral notes, which is looking at the inverse of a product AB. So we can say that AB inverse is the same as B inverse A inverse. So look at the way that the order there changes. Now in general if I've got a matrix I want to be able to work out what its inverse matrix is. So here we've got the matrix 1, 2, negative 3 and 4 and an unknown inverse that I'm going to call P, Q, R and S. We know that if we multiply those two together that we get the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. Now if we look at the left hand side I can multiply out in the usual way the first row by the first column so that we get P plus 2, R and that must be equal to 1 which is the first element in the identity matrix. If we now look at the second row multiplied by the first column you can see that we get negative 3p plus 4r and that must be equal to 0. So there we've got a pair of simultaneous equations that we can solve for p and r. In a similar way but this time multiplying by not the first column but the second column you can get a pair of equations for Q and S. So there's the two sets of equations and you can check for yourselves that when you solve those you get these values for P, Q, R and S. So that means I can write those values into the matrix for A inverse which I've done on the next slide and then I've taken out the common factor there of one tenth and leaving us with the numbers 4, negative 2, 3 and 1 inside the A inverse matrix. What I'd like you to do is look at the pattern here to see what's happened to the elements. I'm hoping you'll see that the 4 and the 1 have changed places so the elements which are on what we call the leading diagonal of the matrix have swapped and the other two their sign has changed so the twos become negative two and the three become negative three. The 
tenth is a little bit trickier to explain, but the the tenth, well, the ten itself comes from what we know uh, know as the determinant of the matrix, which is written like this, with two lines around it, or sometimes as det a, or indeed just using the capital letter delta. And that comes from the product of the leading diagonal, which is 1 multiplied by 4, minus the product of the other diagonal, so minus the 2 multiplied by negative 3. And you'll see there you get 4 minus negative 6, which is 10. So we've actually divided by the determinant of A. Now we don't need to go through that process of simultaneous equations each time. So we have this general rule that says that the inverse of the matrix is equal to 1 over the determinant of the matrix multiplied by a matrix where we've swapped the leading diagonal and changed the sign on the other diagonal where the determinant of M is the product AD minus the product BC. Now I've stated this without any real sort of proof, but you could uh, prove it by letting M inverse be equal to PQRS as before, and then forming a pair of simultaneous equations to work out what P and R are in terms of A, B, C and D. You'll find that proof in your textbooks as well. The determinant of the matrix then, just to reiterate, is the product of the leading diagonal minus the product of the other diagonal. There's one important thing that we need to consider, and that's when the determinant is equal to zero. Because you'll, you'll realize that we're dividing by the determinant to work out the inverse of a matrix. So if the determinant is equal to zero, we have a problem there. The fact that the determinant is equal to zero gives us what's called a singular matrix. So if a matrix has determinant 0, it's said to be singular, and then its inverse will not exist, because 1 over 0 doesn't exist. Well, here's an example then where we're asked to find the value of k if the matrix is singular. Well, we know then that the determinant of m which is here 4 multiplied by negative 1 minus 2k must be equal to 0. So there we've got, therefore, 2k is equal to 4. Sorry, 2k is equal to negative 4, and therefore, k is equal to negative 2. We then ask to find when k is equal to 3, the inverse of the matrix. So if k is equal to 3, our matrix is then equal to 4, 3, 2, negative 1. The determinant of m is therefore negative 4 minus 6, which is negative 10. And therefore the inverse, m inverse, is equal to 1 over negative 10 multiplied by the matrix formed by swapping the leading diagonal and changing the sign on the other diagonal. Now it's rather easier for us if we put the negative sign inside so we get 1 tenth of the matrix 1, 3, 2 and negative 4. The idea of using uh, inverse matrices allows us to solve simultaneous equations. A pair of simultaneous equations can be written as a single matrix equation by taking the coefficients 4, 3, 2, negative 1 and multiplying by a little column x, y 
and that must be equal to 1, negative 2. But because I've got a matrix here, I can multiply by the inverse of the matrix, and that will then give me the identity on the left-hand side. So multiplying by the inverse of that matrix, which I'd already calculated on the previous slide to be 1 tenth, and then 1, 3, 2, negative 4, But of course, multiplying on the left-hand side, I must do exactly the same on the right-hand side. So I get 1 tenth of 1, 3, 2, negative 4, multiplied by 1, negative 2. So on the left-hand side, because all of this here forms the identity, I've just got x, y. And on the right-hand side, if we calculate that, I've got 1 tenth outside. And then multiplying out, we get 1 plus negative 6, which is negative 5. And then on the bottom line, 2 plus 8 is 10. Or in other words, then we can write, read off from there that x is negative 5 over 10, which is negative 1 half and y is equal to 10 over 10, which is 1. Well, that was the end of this video on uh, determinants and inverses, and indeed the end of the section on matrices and uh, the introduction to matrix operations.